Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Read Review. I'm Liam Murphy, and today I'll be reviewing the Cane Corso. All right, guys, so I'm back from my vacation. I don't know if you can call it a vacation when you spend the entire time either in the hospital or in your bed. Messed up my shoulder, not a big deal, I can fight through it. All right guys, so the Cane Corso, really love these dogs a lot. One of my favorite are the Mastiff type dogs. The Cane Corso originated in Italy and they were bred as a guard dog or a protection dog. So they're classified as a working dog. Nowadays they're still used as working dogs and protection dogs, guard dogs, things like that. Also as family companions. Again, so they come from Italy. Now I've heard people pronounce it differently. I just read it as Cane, C-A-N-E. Corso, that's the way I pronounce it. This isn't a class project. If you pronounce it differently, great. That's good for you. That's excellent. I pronounce it Cane Corso. You can read in the description. You know the dog I'm talking about. Okay, so Cane Corso comes from Italy. Cane means dog in Italian. So Cane means dog and Corso means cannolis. Wait, no, it's not. Wait, is it cannolis? Oh, wait, one second. Hold on. Nope, that's wrong. Nope, nope. It does not mean cannolis. I'm sorry, you guys. Protector. So dog protector. Protector, protection dog. It's a working dog, a guard dog. Now the Cane Corso, unlike most massive breeds, they were a lot leaner. They're not as bulky as most massive breeds out there. Now they are a very large muscular dog, don't get me wrong. Their weights can range anywhere from about 90 pounds to 110 pounds. So a very, very big dog. They were just a little bit tighter, a little bit leaner, much more agile and much more athletic than most of your massive breeds. So what do you guys say? Let's get into the review. Let's talk about health. Now, Bigger dogs a lot of times come with bigger health problems. These guys don't have a ton of health issues, not a ton, but they do have a few health issues that are very common in them. So they might not have a long list of them, but the short list that they do have, I've seen a lot in these breeds. So if you're looking for one of these breeds, you want to talk to the breeder about health. And for me, my three main concerns would be hip dysplasia, eating leashes, yucky, I'm sorry. I see a lot of eye problems with these guys, cherry eye and other things with scientific terms that I can't pronounce, but there are a lot of eye issues with this breed. Okay, all right, so they just gotta keep going. Okay, I get it. Sorry, baby. And another main concern for these guys is bloat. And we've talked about bloat with other breeds, and what bloat is, if you're not familiar with it, is when air gets trapped in the stomach, causing it to flip on itself, which can be very, very dangerous, and a lot of the times, deadly for dogs. So if you do end up getting a cane corso, you wanna sit down with your vet, and you wanna ask them about bloat. How can you decrease the chances of your dog getting bloat? What signs would you wanna be looking for if your dog does, unfortunately, get bloat? Overall health for these guys, I'm gonna give them a 3.5 for health. Not terrible, oh, god damn. Give myself a one for health. I keep forgetting that it's injured and I'm not supposed to be moving it. It's supposed to be in a sling, but nobody wants to see me in a sling. All right, let's talk about temperament. And this is where lovers of certain breeds get upset with me, and that's fine because they're basing it off of just their dog. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. I'm trying to help people who have never owned these dogs before, never worked with them, don't know anything about them. Just trying to give you some information of things that you might want to look out for. Let me start off by saying first off, these guys make very good family companions. They can be very, very good with kids. Now. One thing that I say with kids, with not just a cane corso, but any working dog, any god type dogs, any dogs that's used in protection. My opinion now, this is strictly my opinion. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you if you don't do it this way, you're wrong. Take this however you want, okay? My thing with kids and dogs, I prefer to have the kids first. Now, if you don't do it that way, now that's just my preference. I just feel more comfortable that way. I'm not saying that it has to be done that way. I'm not saying that's the best way to do it. I'm not saying if you don't do it that way, then you should have child services come, kick your door down, take your kids away, and put you on the news, okay? I'm not saying any of all that. I'm just saying it's just my way, and, and, and that's nothing against if you do it any other way. That's just my personal preference of how I do it with my kids, okay? I just think it's easier to have that dog grow up as a puppy as opposed to all of a sudden an adult dog having children thrust upon it, little babies, small kids, toddlers pulling on its ears, and it's just never had that, I think can be, I, I think it can be stressful and, and, and a bit of a risk for me. All right, now that being said, this is a very protective dog. They're gonna be extremely protective of their people and their property, and they make a fantastic god dog. If that's what you're looking for, then, that's, then these guys make a great fit, okay? If you're not into that, if you're not looking for a dog that's gonna scream, it's go time, mother reffa, every time a package gets delivered to you, you're probably not gonna want one of these dogs. These are not lay around the house and just take up space dogs. These are not like your English massives who wanna just kinda lounge around, and nothing against English massives, calm down, but they're not as protective as these guys. These guys are much, much more of a working protection dog than most of your massive breeds. They're extremely protective. Again, not a bad thing. Can be a good thing, but for some people they don't want that. They want people to be able to come and go as they please, not have to worry about putting the dog away. As far as with other dogs, I'm not going to say they're 100% great with other dogs. I'm not going to say that. But I also am not going to say that they're 100% bad with other dogs either, okay? What I will say is this. They're a 100 plus pound protection dog. If you're not a strong and confident individual who is in complete control of your dog, 
then you definitely will have issues for sure. Absolutely not, no doubt about it. You're gonna have problems, okay? So you wanna look at yourself. Take a good look at yourself in the mirror. Do I have the ability to be in control of the dog? Can I control it? Will it listen to me? Am I that type of personality? Some people are, some people aren't. But I'll tell you this right now, the dog will know. It'll figure you out. If it doesn't feel like you're keeping it safe, it's gonna to try to keep you safe a little bit too much. All right, so if you're not in control, if you're not a strong, confident person and in control of this dog, you're gonna have problems, whether that be with other dogs or other people. That's with most working dogs, okay? That's with most dogs, period. The temperament's really gonna come down to training, which we're gonna get into next, and also how much control you have. I mean, nobody wants to see you getting dragged across the parking lot with your pants around your ankles as you're being towed by a 100-pound monster coming after them by trying to take their snickerdoodle out for a quick bathroom break at the end of the night, okay? You gotta be in control of your dog. So for temperament for these guys, I'm gonna give them a 3.5. Okay, let's move on to training because it is so important when it comes to their temperament. They're a smart dog. So when you get one of these guys, if you decide, hey, I'm gonna get a cane corso, great, great dogs. Make sure you get into training right away and you stay consistent with it throughout its life. Okay, you always gotta be working on training with these guys. And that being said, they are a very, very smart dog. So you wanna make sure that you go to a trainer that has experience with these breeds. You wanna make sure you get them into training early. And you wanna make sure you stay consistent with them for the years to come. Now they are a very, very intelligent dog, so there's no excuse. Very, very smart dog, they can learn things very quickly. They like to learn, they're willing to work, they're willing to please. So no excuses, get into training right away and maintain that control of the animal. Trainability for these guys, I'm gonna give them a four. Let's move on to activity. Pretty active breed for a big dog, okay? These guys are very athletic. Like I said before, they're not your typical massive. They're much more svelte, okay? They're much more, that hurt again. I really gotta stop moving it. They're very, they're very tight, muscular dog, very athletic. So these guys can require a little bit more exercise than most of your massive breeds. Now again, they're a rapidly growing breed. They grow very, very fast. So in the early stages, when they're really young, one, two, you know, and you wanna go over this with your vet. You wanna check with your vet and say, and really stick to an exercise program because if you do too much when they're young, while they're in the growing stages, you're gonna damage their bodies, okay? You're gonna damage their joints and their bones and things like that. So you wanna be very careful. You wanna make sure that you work with your vet and you guys establish a solid exercise plan together. These are the type of dogs that need about an hour a day. I would say a good, solid, long walk an hour a day. If you can take them to a park, let them run for a bit, that's even great. But not a dog that needs intense workout all the time. I mean, this isn't the type of dog you're gonna take on a cross-country ski excursion, get home, drink some hot chocolate and maybe some soup. And by the time you're done, the dog's back at the door looking to go again. That's not one of these types of breeds. They're more of just, like I said, an hour a day, good, solid activity. You know, whether that be a hike, a good walk, something like that, maybe a trip to the dog park. A little bit more than some of your masters, but not as much as some of your, your like sporting dogs and things like that. Overall activity for these guys, I'm gonna give them a three. All right, guys, so that's it. That's the Cane Corso. Very, very impressive breed. Again, one thing I can't stress enough is you have to make sure that you are the type of person that can handle a dog like this. You know, you wanna make sure that you're a very confident, strong individual, and it doesn't matter if you're five feet tall or 100 feet tall. I don't think anybody is 100 feet tall, but you know what I mean. All right, let's go over some pros of the Cane Corso now. Beautiful, loyal, protective dog. They make really good family companions and are very, very intelligent. They don't require a lot of grooming, very short, tight coat. And although there are some health issues, there's not a ton. Some of the cons for these guys would be their size. Okay, so that can be a huge con for some people. Another one can be their protectiveness. For some people, that's a pro. Again, for some people, that's gonna be a con. Stop barking at the mailman. You know him, you know it's him. You know it's him, he comes at the same time every day. Stop barking at him. I was like, what are you talking about? He keeps coming back. I bought, he leaves. He keeps, he's challenging me. They don't know. They don't know. They're natural protectors. So some people can get frustrated with that. So that's something that you have to take into consideration. All right, guys, so that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Shoulder's healing up. I'm gonna have to have surgery, maybe. I don't know. I hate the doctors, so probably not. Hopefully it'll just, it's, I'm gonna need surgery. But anyways, it's not gonna hold anything up anyways. It doesn't matter. I don't need two arms to do this. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. You guys are the best. Thank you. Again, keep those comments coming. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, hit subscribe. Click on the notification bell so you know when I post a new video. It might be the next dog for you. I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday season. I'm a little bit bummed that it's over. Super bummed that my shoulder's still hurting. But it's just a shoulder. There's only two parts of my body that I really don't want to hurt. One's the face. I hope you guys had an awesome day with your dogs. I'll see you again on the next one. Bye, guys.